Season number two of the Denver Broncos franchise is underway today as we start our campaign at home against the Washington Commanders. It's been around two weeks since the last episode of the series has been uploaded. It feels really good to be back. And for those of you who might be living under a rock, who might have missed the post I made on the YouTube community tab last week or mentioned in the Discord server, link is in the description. Basically, the reason why this series was put on hiatus, if you will, is because the draft class was entirely glitched. I could not put equipment on any of the players some of their appearances were just completely off. It was a mess. And the only way I could fix it would be redoing the entire draft class. And that's what I have been doing over the last week or so. And I'm pleased to report that the new draft class is complete. I did not deal with any setbacks while creating it. So all of the players, as you can see here, have been correctly placed to their teams. Since it's been a couple of weeks since the draft episode, I figured let's go through a little refresher because it's been a minute. So the storyline for us going into the draft is what we're going to do with the number three overall pick. Are we going to keep the selection, draft best player available, draft a quarterback, or trade down? And ultimately, we opted for the latter, moving down with the Jets, who moved up for quarterback Jalen Milrow out of the University of Alabama. So we ended up getting the 8th pick along with a 2nd rounder and a 1st next year from the Jets. And we picked Georgia edge rusher Michael Williams. He had a terrific junior season with the Dogs. And I think he can be an alpha pass rusher for our defense. I'm really excited about the rest of our draft. With the 2nd rounder we got from the Jets, we picked Marvin Grant. Of course, we know him quite well from the Kansas dynasty. With our other 2nd rounder, we got Ashton Gentry, the dynamic running back from Boise State. We traded back up for Oregon linebacker Jeffrey Bossa. And we made some other good picks as well. I think Savon Revel and Tez Johnson are two guys who certainly could have short and long-term impacts for our team. Some other highlights of the draft include our good Kansas friends, Jalen Daniels and Devin Neal, teaming up in our division with the Las Vegas Raiders. Of course, Jordan Birch ended up going number one overall. And along with Milrow and Daniels, we had three other quarterbacks, Kyron Drones, Quinn Ewers, and Cam Ward. All go in the first round to the Vikings, Steelers, and Browns, respectively. Minnesota, of course, drafting a quarterback after the catastrophic knee injury to J.J. McCarthy. That brings us to undrafted free agency. Here are our signings. The notable ones include former Florida State quarterback D.J. Uyunglele. I think the skill position guys, running back Rashul Faison from Utah State and TCU receiver Sevion Williams could both make the final roster. And then defensively, the standout here, in my opinion, is Air Force cornerback Jabari Bellamy. He was a guy I liked throughout the pre-draft process. And then we signed some additional veterans as well, including quarterback Matt Corral, who will compete with DJ Uyunglele for the backup quarterback spot. And we added some other guys to fill out the roster. We brought back Lucas Kroll, and we signed a new punter, Rigoberto Sanchez. So this is what the team looks like going into the preseason. Normally, I don't play the starters, but I'm actually going to get these guys a little bit of run this year. Don't worry about the order of the depth chart. That's not really super important. We will finalize it going into week one. But we ended up going 2-1 and one in the preseason. Not too bad. We beat Arizona, lost to the Bucks, and then beat the Falcons. So there were a few positional battles that I watched out for, specifically backup quarterback. And it seems like DJ Uyunglele very clearly outplayed Matt Corral. So if that's the route we go with, it looks like the undrafted rookie will be the backup behind Bo Nix. The run game was pretty solid. Marvin Mims was terrific. He seemed to be at his best with DJ Uyunglele at quarterback. Troy Franklin played well, as did Rivaldo Fairweather. He was our best tight end. And if the tight end production from last year carries into this year, I think Fairweather might get some playing time very early on into the regular season. Michael Williams was really good. Baron Browning was terrific. Jeffrey Bossa performed well. So it's good to see pretty much all of the rookie class producing. Marvin Grant was pretty solid as well. So that brings us to the cutting players stage. We're going to have to cut 18 guys, and we will cut Matt Corral. DJ Uyunglele will be the backup quarterback behind Bo Nix. We're going to roll with four running backs, including the undrafted rookie Rashul Faison. There's going to be a common theme of undrafted rookies making the final roster. As for the receiver position, there's another one. I mentioned TCU wideout Savion Williams is a name to watch. He will be the number six receiver behind this clear top five. And now it's a matter of 
what the order of playing time will be for this group. Curious to see if one of Troy Franklin or Tez Johnson can really break out. As for tight end, we're going to roll with four guys here. Again, this is really anybody's position. It depends on who plays well and who doesn't throughout the year. Another UDFA who made the final roster is offensive guard Addison West. So that's already four undrafted rookies making the 53 on just the offensive side of the ball alone. Jared Penning almost made it. That's the younger brother of former Saints first rounder Trevor Penning, also an alum of Northern Iowa. On the defensive line, no major surprises. We are going to keep Chauncey Golston and Dietrich Wise, who we just added to the roster. Francisco Maui Noah was probably my toughest decision, but we're going to put him on the practice squad. I almost had him with the initial 53, but he will not make the opening day roster. Jamari Bellamy will, however. So we're going to run with, it looks like, seven corners here. Pretty much all these guys are going to get an opportunity to play. So again, it's going to be a matter of who performs well with Patrick Sertan and Chris Abrams drain. And then for the last spot at safety, I was between JL Skinner and Dellerin Turner Yell. But I think we're going to roll with Skinner. Wet healthy. I think he's got the chance to be pretty good. Showed some high upside at Boise State. And that brings us to week one with the commanders on the schedule. But first, we've got to look at the depth chart. We're going to be running a lot of rotations at positions, including running back with Javante Williams and Ashton Genty. I'm hoping all five of those receivers can find the field. We're going to use a few different guys at tight end, and then defensively, rotating guys in and out at linebacker and in terms of the edge spots. We've talked a lot about the addition of Jeffrey Bossa to the linebacking core, but don't forget, Drew Sanders is healthy as well. As for our team captains, we're returning five from last year. Bo Nix, Cortland Sutton, Mike McGlinchey, John Franklin Myers, and Patrick Sertan. However, we do have one more captain spot who we have to fill out. And ultimately, I'm going to give it to Jonathan Cooper, the talented edge rusher. He's more of the depth guy for us, especially with the selection of Michael Williams, who I'm hoping to play quite a bit. But Cooper's definitely going to have a role for this team still. Very high character player. And I think he has earned the opportunity to be a captain for us for at least this next season, being that he only signed a one-year extension with us in the offseason. So now it's time to do some media stuff that starts with this press conference. And the talking point in this press conference kind of caught me off guard. Of all the position rotations, he wants to talk about quarterback. Well, I don't think there's much to talk about at the QB position. Bo Nix will be our starter this year, and DJ Uyunglele will be the backup. So I guess that means DJ is going to sit. I don't anticipate him playing unless Bo Nix either gets injured or is just completely awful. Based on last year, I don't think the latter will happen. So, knock on wood, we gotta hope he stays healthy. We've also gotta decide which part of the team is a strength and which part of the team is a weakness. Considering the struggles last year defensively, especially with the pass defense, I'm gonna say the defense is the weakness. I like a lot of the additions we made to the pass defense in the secondary and on the front line, but they've gotta show it. In terms of our offensive strength, I'm going to say the run game. We had a pretty productive rushing attack last year, and we upgraded at the running back position with the addition of Ashton Genty in the second round, who should be able to complement Javante Williams quite nicely. I think we should be able to shatter the 1,300 rushing yards mark as a team. Keep in mind, that's not just for one player. That would be for the entire roster. As for the team goal, is it realistic to expect the playoffs? No. But I also don't think it's fair to the rest of the roster, especially considering the improvements we made, to aim for anything less. And now, it's time to look at this Week 1 matchup. We've got the Commanders at home. Washington was terrific last year. They shocked everybody, won the NFC East, won a playoff game. And much of that was because of the performance of rookie quarterback Jaden Daniels, the former Heisman Trophy winner out of LSU who enters his second season with the Commanders, looking to improve upon his great rookie year. Brian Robinson and third-round rookie Makai Hughes lead the backfield. The receiving core loses Terry McLaurin via trade, but they add Rashid Shahid in free agency and Luther Burden in the third round of the NFL draft, and that's along with the rest of the young talent that this team has accumulated. It is worth noting, though, that the Commanders are the only team who did not use a first-round pick in the 2025 draft as they traded away on draft night to the Cleveland Browns, who of course moved up for Cameron Ward. Washington's top pick was Boise State edge rusher Ahmed Hassanin early in the second round. 
So season two is underway. The Broncos will start with it. Fifth round rookie Tez Johnson out of the University of Oregon with a nice return to the 26. Bo Nix's stepbrother with the return and Bo Nix himself will lead the offense out onto the field. We're hoping for a big year two out of Bo Nix. I thought he showed some good flashes last year. Enough for us to not draft a quarterback number three overall, even with Jalen Milrow and Jalen Daniels being on the board. And let's see if that decision pays off as it's the rookie, Ashton Gentry, his first NFL touch. And it goes for a third down conversion. I'm excited about the pairing of Gentry and Javante Williams. I think the two of them are going to complement each other well with the hope that Gentry eventually develops into a superstar. Third and three, Nix evades the pressure and runs for the first down. Bo Nix really impressed me as a scrambler last year, and we're seeing that on display here. For a lot of quarterbacks, that's a drive-ending sack. Third and ten, Nix up the middle, broken up. He tries to get it to Genty, but it's deflected away by Jartavis Martin, the third-year defensive back out of the University of Illinois. Will Lutz from 55, this one is good. Lutz struggled early last year before picking up the pace. And he starts his season with a long one. So the Broncos with a so-so opening drive. They will score, leading it 3-0 as we take our first look at the Commander's offense. Jaden Daniels up the middle. His day starts off strong as he connects with Jahan Dutson, who still plays for Washington here. He gets the first down. Ironic that Terry McLaurin now plays for the Eagles as it is a third and one. Robinson in motion. He gets it, and he will not get the first down. Jonah Ellis brings him down. The second-year edge rusher out of Utah. We're hoping for a bigger roll out of him. Showed some flashes as a rookie with rotational snaps, and Denver gets it back. Play action. Knicks under pressure, and he cannot escape this one. Frankie Luvu brings him down with the sack, and that's a big loss. It was a second and short. We went for the play action, maybe trying to go for the big play. But ultimately, it backfires severely as the third down pass is broken up in the secondary. Knicks was looking for Troy Franklin. And Denver ultimately has to punt it away. Here's Jaden Daniels under pressure, evades the sack, gets by Grant, and he runs for the first down. We know Jaden Daniels is electric as a runner. I'm a little bit surprised Marvin Grant missed that tackle. He did not miss many his senior season at the University of Kansas. We will get to Daniels here on third and eight. It's a sack for Nick Bonito, who led the team in sacks a year ago. Finished in second place for the stud of the year. And that'll wrap up the first quarter. A defensive battle early here in the Mile High City. A 3-0 lead for the Broncos. We're looking really good defensively so far. Definitely a difference from last year. But the offense hasn't looked all that great so far. Second and nine. Nick's up the middle. He's got Marvin Mims, who of course was the overall winner. For our stud of the year last year. Right around 1,000 yards receiving. Going up to superstar development. Here's the pitch for Javante Williams on second and 10. And he loses two. He is wrapped up on the play quickly. I think that was Jamin Davis. Who brought him down and it's third and 12. Knicks under pressure has to throw out of the sack. Good job by Josh Sweat. Signed in the offseason from Philadelphia. To bring him down. Second and inches play action for Daniels. And he is sacked off the blitz. The rookie out of Oregon, Jeffrey Bossa, comes home to make the play. Bossa had 14 and a half sacks last year at Oregon, used primarily as a blitzer, and we're going to use him as such in the NFL. Third and seven, this one is broken up, looking for Dotson. It's Patrick Sertan who makes the play. It's a contract year for Sertan, expected to break the bank at the cornerback position. Denver back with it. Here's Ashton Gentry to the outside with a spin move and a nice first down run. In limited touches, Genty looks pretty good up to this point after a pretty so-so preseason. Five and a half to go in the first half. Up the middle, Cortland Sutton with the first down. Could this be the start of something good offensively? Because so far, three drives, three points. The offense really isn't giving us enough. Got to convert this third and ten, though. Short throw for Dulcich. Did not look like anybody was going to be open downfield. And ultimately, the Broncos will punt it away. So Washington gets it back. Still 3-0 with under 3.5 to go in the first half. As that one is hauled in for a first down by Luke McCaffrey, the second-year receiver out of Rice. Even though Washington's receiving core is not great, it's a very young unit. 
Up the middle, Makai Hughes, the rookie running back out of Tulane to the 40. He was not the only rookie running back they drafted, also selecting Texas Tech's Taj Brooks in the sixth round. Following the two-minute warning, Daniels lobs it up. He's picked off. Brandon Jones with the interception, high points the football, basically mosses Jahan Dotson, and the Broncos get it back. Of course, Brandon Jones is now on the second season of a three-year contract signed in the 2024 free agency cycle. I thought he was pretty bad his first season with us, and that was a big reason why we drafted Marvin Grant to begin with. But now Jones is going to be used primarily as a free safety, less around the line of scrimmage, more in coverage, and hopefully that's a sign of things to come. We are in safety territory, but not for long. It's a gain of 13 on the check down for Ashton Genty. He gets it back on the following play, and he is out of bounds, stopping the clock at the 34. The impressive opening first half for the second round running back, Ashton Genty, continues. Second and one, play action. Nix looks to throw it. Scrambles to the right side, hoping somebody gets open downfield, and indeed it's Josh Reynolds to the 42. On the play, though, Reynolds tore his abdominal. Out for the game, probably out for multiple weeks. So that means we're going to see a lot of Troy Franklin, and we're probably going to see some more Tez Johnson as well with the injury to Reynolds. From the 42, it's a screen for Genty. He's been active in the passing game so far, and he gets another first down, getting 14 yards. For Genty, that's his third first down at the drive. Still got the two timeouts, but there's also only 15 seconds. Nix under pressure, outruns the pass rusher, and there goes Bo. Out of bounds at the 16, that'll stop the clock with both timeouts still in our back pocket. But there's only eight seconds, needing a quick throw up the middle. Marvin Mims to the two. Going to use that second timeout, and since there's still five seconds, I think we have enough time to run another play. We can run or pass having the timeout. It is a pass. Now Nix is going to have to throw it pretty quickly, and it's incomplete. He had a receiver wide open on the left side of the end zone. I already know I'm going to get grilled for that in the comments. With two seconds left, the offense stays on the field. Gutsy call, and it works! A buzzer beater touchdown for the rookie. Ashton Jetsy with his first NFL score. We wanted to throw the defense off a little bit. Line him up at fullback. And the fake worked. The rookie caps off his impressive first half with his first career touchdown. And even though Bo Nix missed a completely wide open receiver in the end zone, thank God we end up punching it in anyway. It's a 10-0 lead going into the break. Got to give a shout out to the defense. They've been lights out so far as we take a look at our halftime report around the rest of the NFL. Let's check in on our good Jayhawk friends in Vegas. Jalen Daniels, Devin Neal and their NFL debut. So far, so good. Here's Jalen Daniels with his first career rushing touchdown after he ran for 15 as a senior with the Jayhawks, tied for the NCAA lead and tied for the all-time Kansas single-season record. It's a 10-3 lead going into the halftime break for the Raiders. And if this team is going to be really good in the future with the Kansas duo in the backfield, this division is going to be loaded with Herbert and Mahomes already here. Headed to Glendale, Arizona. Third round rookie Carson Beck won the starting job for the Saints and he is off to a flying start. Great training camp, great preseason, great first half in the NFL as he connects with first round rookie Isaiah Bond for a score, 21-7 Saints. This offense has a chance to be really fun with all the rookies they added. Not just Beck and Bond, but you've also got a Marion Hampton, Jake Brinningstool at tight end, and another former Jayhawk and wide receiver Lawrence Arnold. In Minnesota, this game happened earlier today. The Chargers with a win over the Vikings, 24-17. Justin Herbert and Amari Cooper looking pretty good to start this season. The Chargers nearly won the division a year ago. We did sweep them somehow, some way. But the Chargers were right with the Chiefs until the very end of the regular season before Kansas City was able to sprinkle away from them. As we go into the second half, I need more out of the offense, but I liked what I saw on the last drive. We got a little bit lucky with the circumstances at the end to punch it in, but Ashton Genty's been terrific. Otherwise, there really aren't that many positives. I don't think the offensive line's been great. Bo Nix has been eh. I will say I love what I'm seeing from the defense. Dominant start looks nothing like the defense from last year. 
but we'll see if Washington can adjust into the second half as Daniels loses a couple of yards. The big boy, Jordan Davis, brings him down, acquired via trade from the Eagles in the offseason for a few day three selections. Third and eight, Daniels under pressure. Browning leads the way. He has to throw it away. The thing with Baron Browning last year is that he had so many pressures, but he couldn't turn those into sacks. We ultimately believe in him, signing him to a huge four-year extension. As the Broncos have it back on first down, here is Nix under pressure, and he connects with Marvin Mims with a good play after the catch to the 48. Probably Nix's best play of the day. He was able to go through his progressions, make a nice throw, partly because the offensive line actually gave him time. Third and 10, it's Tez Johnson with his first NFL reception. Only goes for a gain of seven. Certainly thought about going for it. Fourth and three, past the 50, but I think it's a little too early for that. And Washington has it back. Brian Robinson Jr. up the middle. Shrugs off Riley Moss, brings it past the 50. Quiet first half for Robinson. They didn't give him the ball a ton, partly because his run defense was so good last year. But I imagine they're going to utilize him a lot more in the second half. Passes off the mark on that play for Daniels. He was looking for Rashid Shahid. So Washington's going to punt it away. The shutout is still intact as Denver gets it back. Second and nine here is Knicks up the middle. Marvin Mims, nice catch. And he hangs on despite a big hit from Benjamin St. Juiced. Another third down. Now it's a third and five. Knicks doesn't like what he sees. Calls an audible at the line. It's a run for Javante Williams. Trying to bounce off a blocker, but he only gets a yard. Jamin Davis brings him down. It's been a rough afternoon for Javante, especially considering how good Ashton Gentry is. Washington back with it. Daniels tackled for a loss. Drew Sanders makes the play. As I mentioned earlier, we haven't talked about him a lot, but he's going to play a big role on this defense, and I'm super excited to have him back. Jeffrey Bossa jars the ball carrier out for a loss of yardage. Bossa's off to a pretty good start at the sack earlier. I think him and Drew Sanders could be a really fun duo. Third and 13, Daniels looking downfield. It's broken up. J.L. Skinner got a hand on it. Another Washington punt, as has been the case for pretty much every drive. And Denver has it back. Javante Williams gets space to the outside. There's the big Javante play we've been looking for. Practically doubled his yardage total on the day. Now averaging three yards a carry. But I don't want to get on him too much. He's coming off a strong season last year. Here's Gentry to the right side with plenty of blockers. He gets the first down. I will say the offensive line has been a lot kinder to Gentry, but he also has been terrific. I don't want to take anything away from him. Ten seconds left in the third. Looks like a design screen, but Bo has to throw it into the ground. Sweat with the pressure, and ultimately we're going to punt the ball. It would be a 53-yarder for Lutz, which is very makeable, but I want to continue to win the field position battle against a struggling offense like Washington. So this one is downed at the eight. And you'll notice in the backfield, a change at quarterback. The former Bronco, Jared Stidham, who was on the team last year, is now under center as Brian Robinson gets a solid gain to end the third quarter. No score change from the second quarter to the third. It's still 10-0 Denver looking to pitch the shutout. But the big storyline is the quarterback change. Even though Jaden Daniels has played pretty abysmally, he's not being benched because of performance. At the end of the last drive, he took a hit, suffered a minor knee injury, nothing to really worry about, but Washington being precautionary, not keeping him in the game. Stidham stuffed behind the line. Another TFL for Drew Sanders, who's had a really productive second half. Second and 11, Stidham looking short. It's Brian Robinson. He's had a good second half. Breaks the tackle from Sertan. And he gets the first down to the 35-yard line. So far, so good on this drive for Jarrett Stidham and company. He was our QB3 last year behind Knicks and Zach Wilson. As he looks to run with it and slides before he can take a big hit by Marvin Grant. This might be the most coherent the Washington offense has looked all day. And it's with the backup quarterback. Who would have thought? Stidham with a strike. It goes for a first down. Rashid Shahid, signed from New Orleans in the offseason. He brings it past the 30 to the 29, now with under six to go. Here's Robinson up the middle. He gets another first down, brings it to the 16. And the offense is continuing to move it down the field really nicely. They might finally be able to get some points on the board. Third and seven. Up the middle. A dime for McCaffrey. 
And the Commanders not only score to end the shutout, but they're right back in the game, only down by three. What a drive from Jarrett Stidham, who looked better than Daniels has all day. So Denver gets it back. We're still in the driver's seat with five minutes to go. Time to choose some clock and have this offense win this game. Going to need a big drive from this kid. Number one, Ashton Genty. And that's a pretty good start. He brings it to the 42-yard line for a Broncos first down. Following play, Knicks will look to throw it here. Downfield, he's got Tez Johnson to the opposing 41. A nice grab by Tez, his second catch of the afternoon. Now under four minutes to go. It's Javante Williams this time with a nice block by Genty. Breaks the tackle, gets the first, but he's out of bounds. Now we'll still take the gain of around 11 or 12, but it's not ideal that the clock stops. Following play, Knicks alone in the backfield, continuing to go to the air. He's incomplete for Mims. But this one looks like a pass interference. They'll call this one on the slot corner. Mike Sainra still in his second year out of Michigan. It's only a net gain of six yards, but more importantly, it gets us the first down. Now we're really focused on running the ball. Here's Javante Williams to the nine. One of the best drives of the game. We've got it now nearing the goal line here at the two-minute warning, looking to hang on and start our season 1-0 against what was a really good team in the NFC a year ago. Second and goal from the five. Genty already scored earlier, and he's getting closer and closer down at the two, and the commanders are finally going to start to use those timeouts. That's number one. Third and goal from the two. What's the play call here? For Bo Nix and the offense. He's calling something here at the line of scrimmage. Switching some kind of route. It is a play action pass. Genty's open. And he's unable to push his leverage into the end zone. And even worse off, he ended up out of bounds. Washington's able to hold on to those timeouts. Fourth and goal at the one. Not even the one. It's like the half yard line. When you're this close, you got to punch it in and go for it. To make it a two score game. Nix is stopped. Washington. With the stop off of the QB sneak. And it's only a three-point game. Now, they're going to start not even at the half-yard line. They're about six inches away from the end zone. And we're going to send the cavalry. Blitz, blitz, blitz. Make Jarrett Stidham get rid of the ball early. Third and ten now at, again, maybe the quarter-yard line. With pressure in the backfield, it's Ben Sinai. Breaks the tackle from Sertan. Gets by multiple defenders. And he gets 38 yards. He's out of bounds. The clock stops. But Jarrett Stidham got hit on the play. He's out of the game. And now Washington goes to their third string quarterback, Kellen Mond. As he connects with Jahan Dotson for a first down to the 47. It's not often where the first and second string quarterback get injured in the same game. But that's what Washington has to deal with. Although Mond's looking pretty good so far. He connects with the rookie Luther Burden. And we've got to call a timeout here for John Franklin Miners. It looks like he suffered a minor hand or a finger injury. So first of all, that sucks. He's one of our better defensive players. But it also stops the clock, forces us to use a timeout. Third and three, a first down up the middle. Again, it's Luther Burden who makes the play. And it's officially a broken finger for JFM. As on first down, Mond is sacked. Baron Browning is able to get home that time, bringing down the quarterback. And Washington will use the second of their three timeouts. Second and 13. Here is Mond. Under a little pressure up the middle. It's going to be caught short. And they will use that third and final timeout. I think with 38 seconds left, it's fine. Because even if they don't get this, they should have enough time to trot the field goal unit out on the field, supposedly. But we'll see if they find a way to mismanage this. It's going to be a run on third and seven. Makai Hughes gets a couple of yards. And there is an injury, so the clock ends up stopping anyway. This time it's Hughes. The Washington backfield has just gotten decimated by injuries today. We've mostly been lucky with the injuries other than JFM and Josh Reynolds. Washington, it's a different story. Field goal to tie is good from 44 yards out. And so an impressive fourth quarter by Washington with two backup quarterbacks. The second stringer leads him to a touchdown. The third stringer leads him to a field goal. Now we've got around 16 seconds left, hoping for the best. Up the middle, it's going to be a gain of 8 for Cortland Sutton. We're going to use one of those timeouts. So now we've only got one remaining. Third and two, 8 seconds to go. The goal is a big play and then field goal range. And look at this, Tez Johnson, wide open! 
down the field, and he is out of bounds as time expires. I don't think this play would have counted anyway, as it's going to be a holding on Greg Dulcich. Washington's going to decline the penalty because that way, that'll just send the game into overtime. The clock was at zeros anyway. So an impressive fourth quarter for Washington, and we're going to get an extra period of football. And it's fitting that Season 2 starts off of overtime, because last year we played in overtime so many games. Five overtime games a season ago that tied the NFL record. It will be Kellen Mond at quarterback the rest of the way for the Commanders. As of course, heads or tails, you guys know the drill, tails never fails. Oh, it's heads! And Washington won the toss, they're going to start with the ball. Tails never fails except for like 20% of the time, and this happened to be one of the 20%. So Washington starts with it, and remember, these are not playoff overtime rules. If they score a touchdown here, they win. Mon hands it off for Robinson. He's smothered. Marvelous Marvin Grant brings him down. He's had an impressive second half here in his Broncos debut, and that'll bring us to a huge play, third and 11. Here's Mond up the middle. Short throw is caught. And Marvin Grant, again, is there with the tackle. Marvin Grant led college football in tackles a season ago with over 140. So the defense does their job, and now it's time for the offense to win this game. Second and seven, up the middle. First down for Cortland Sutton. He brings it to the 30. It's about moving slow and steady, and keep in mind all we need is a field goal to finish this one off for good. Here is Gentry to the right side. Tries to juke away from the defender. He'll break off for a nice gain. Gets the first, averaging over eight yards a carry here in his NFL debut. Second and ten now from the 42. Play action. Nicks under pressure. Evades the sack. On the run. Connects with Genty for a first down. What a play by Bo Nix. I thought that play was dead. I thought he was going to be sacked. Would have been a loss of 10. Third and 20. Basically kills the drive. But instead, he evades the pressure, makes the throw. And that'll put the Broncos really close to field goal range. And this should put them in range. It's a gain of 12 for guess who? Ashton Genty to the 28. We are in field goal range now, but we want to get a little bit closer. Now at the two-minute warning, up the middle, Marvin Mims into the red zone. He gets it to the 15. Doesn't hurt to get even more closer here. Second and 9, 120 to go. We're going to try to run the ball here, center the kick as much as possible, but Genty loses a couple there. We're also going to try to choose some clock as well. God forbid there's some disaster here. If we miss the kick, this way at least the commanders won't have much time. Now Genty loses three on third and 11. It's Jerzon Newton who brings him down as Dan Quinn will use a timeout to try to ice the kicker. I'm not sure why he didn't call the timeout earlier there because, again, if Will Lutz misses it, he would have more time to score. But here's Lutz, 36 for the win. It's good! And Will Lutz puts the finishing touches with just seconds to go here in overtime. The Broncos survive. They knock off the Commanders and start the season 1-0. Just like last year, an overtime win to kick off the season. Now, hopefully the rest of the year isn't like last season, but this is a good start. Facing off against a team who won, I think, 12 games a year ago. They come into our trap, but ultimately we get the job done in a defensive battle. Still a lot of work to do. Only one touchdown drive from the offense. But overall, you cannot complain with a win. And I think the biggest positive was that the defense looked terrific, especially the pass defense, which was our weakness last year. Now on offense, we had 80 snaps. That's a lot. It doesn't say that we dominated time of possession, but we sure did. Bo Nix threw the ball 50 times. And obviously, I don't want that to be the norm. But overall, I thought he was pretty solid. Only completed 58% of his passes, but the offensive line wasn't too kind to him. I thought Washington's coverage was pretty good. And I will give Bo Nix credit. That play to Ashton Genty off the sack in overtime won us this game. If not for that, we're probably 0-1. As for Washington, three different quarterbacks playing. And unironically, Jaden Daniels was the worst of the group. Jared Stidham looked legitimately good before he got hurt. And even Kellen Mond looked competent. Both teams ran the ball well. Ashton Genty was terrific. Wasn't overly impressed with the run defense, though. Obviously a strength last year and then through the air. Mims was good. Tez Johnson was good. Ashton Genty was good. Troy Franklin had some nice catches, as did Cortland Sutton. Very much a team effort at receiver, and then the defense was awesome. Marvin Grant had a great debut. Drew Sanders had a great first game back. 
Jeffrey Bossa played really well. Baron Browning played really well. Everybody played really well on defense. And then Will Lutz, of course, with the game winner at the end to help us pull it out 13 to 10. We do have a new injury, though. Josh Reynolds will miss the next four games with the abdominal tear. I think we'll be okay without him, given that Marvin Mims played well. I'm sure Cortland Sutton's going to get it together. And both Troy Franklin and Tez Johnson showed us some good flashes today. As we take a look at our scores around the rest of the league, Jalen Daniels and Devin Neal do get the job done for the Raiders, winning their first NFL games. Daniels was terrific, and then Devin Neal was quite good too. Am I supposed to root for them or root against them? Because they're in our division, but I can't help but want to see them do well. As for the players of the week, Baker Mayfield, Anthony Richardson, Jonathan Grenard, and Dante Jackson. I can't help but think Jordan Birch got robbed, though. Yeah, he's going to be a problem for the Patriots, picking up right where he left off from his senior season at the University of Oregon. And that'll wrap things up. Next time around, we've got a doubleheader, weeks two and three. That starts with week two at Soldier Field against Caleb Williams and the Chicago Bears. Should be a fun one, and there's going to be plenty of Broncos episodes over the next couple of weeks to try to make up for the lost time of missing the last two weeks. So I hope everybody enjoyed. I hope everybody is excited that the series is back and Season 2 is underway, especially with a win. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Broncos country, let's ride!